Coming up, crazy story. A single mom accused of child trafficking. We're gonna tell you why she's demanding new airline protocols after a case of mistaken identity. Also coming up, a Hamptons mansion is selling for $38 million, but there's a big catch. If you buy it, you can't live in it. What? We'll explain. All right, a little bit later on. University of Maryland suspends all fraternity and sororities following controversial activities. And guess what? They're not calling it hazing. Interesting. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. One, I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English, and we are holding true to the uh, the motto that uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Yes. Jackson forgot her her, her tablet over yes. here, and Maddie ran over here. We're going to be checking with Maddie, too. Maddie's actually got a busy week this week. Uh, he's getting married this Saturday. What are we, 72 hours out? Something yes. like that. No, no longer being single. And uh, one of the hardest things is to making sure that, you know, everybody has, uh, is fed and taken care of mm -hmm. food-wise. How are we looking for this wedding? Do I need to bring thing. my own? We had a thing on the website. Let us know if you have a dietary restriction, right? <laughs> Somebody asks for a vegetarian meal. We pay the extra for the vegetarian meal. Oh no! They canceled the other. Uh, that's <gasps> not cool. So now I'm stuck with a vegetarian meal. But uh, I'm like, I don't. That's I don't. not nice. <laughs> and you, I, obviously, they won't give me the money back. Of so. course not. I put mine uh, no broccoli. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I did have to put gluten free though. Like, yes, yeah, we got that. that. that that's fine. But it's like, don't ask for something special and then bail. Don't you recall there was a there was a time where none of those questions were ever you did asked? It. No, one hundred percent. Yes, you, you just show up at the you wedding. Show you, up, and you were you thankful that there was a meal and maybe a free cocktail. And you liked and it. Yeah, liked it. <laughs> and and you were had, married for. A and that was also a time where there were no strollers at the theme parks. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Those are good did days. We turned into a stroller theme park world. I remember when I was a kid, we went to uh, to Disney World, and I thought, well, you just people leave their you know their wheelchairs and their strollers there for like well, yeah. I don't feel like taking it anymore. So. Yeah. No, they because they're on the ride, and I took it. And uh, my friend, ha, ha, look at us, we're funny. And we ran into the back of this guy's shit, his uh, what do you down a foot, you yeah, know, shin. shin or whatever. And he's like, ah. <laughs> still in my mind, and I'm sorry for that guy. Uh, all righty, pickleball. Everybody is playing this game. Yeah. It is uh, now the fastest growing sport from 2022 to 23. 52% up as far as participation go. Get this, 13.6 million people uh, played pickleball actively in 2023. To give you an idea of what went down, about 14.1 million people played soccer, and a lot of that's in Europe. You uh -huh. know, right? And then 13.1 million people enjoyed downhill skiing. But for 13.6 a million people, for a relatively new sport, if you yeah. think about it, and you can see how fast it is, why isn't it yet into the Olympics? It I will can be. It's got Guaranteed. to be, right? And not this Summer Olympics, but the next one. If we've got surfing in the Olympics, we will have pickleball. <laughs> I agree with you. No question. I agree with you. We have travel stories, and, and sometimes it's people that just misbehave on the plane. Mm -hmm. well, what about when things before you even get on the plane happen? And this happened to a single mom, and she claimed that Southwest Airlines actually accused her of child trafficking while she was traveling with her four-year-old son. Take a look. So what can we do for future? What are the steps that you could take? I don't know, maybe step one, ask for my ticket, ask for my son's ticket, ask for my ID. Um, I don't know, do we, do we need to carry our birth certificates now? Is that a new thing that we need to do um, up until they're 16 years old or something? I mean, what is it that you can do instead of just, let me just call the TSA cops. Okay, she, by the way, she wasn't driving. Her, her camera was moving around. It made it look like the background. She wasn't driving. She was in her car. Anyway, this is video footage that will show the moment a 45-year-old mom actually confronted by two cops at the airport after they received a call from an airline employee. At first, she thought the officers were just joking. Then she became terrified when they continued to question her and ask for proof that she was the actual child's mother. Ooh. Mother has called on the industry to introduce a proper protocol. She said Southwest Airlines has attempted to reach out to her, but she's still waiting until she talks to a lawyer. Um, all right, and, and where we, I sit on this at least is like, it's better to do something than nothing at all. But maybe you wouldn't have gotten to that point um, if, you know, uh, if there were those protocols 
in play right now. And I, I kind of have to say they, they were doing their job. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, I, we don't know exactly what all was said and how much, you know, I need to do a blood test or nothing like that mm -hmm. happened. But still, it, you know, if, if this was a case where maybe that child was being kidnapped mm -hmm. or maybe the mother was leaving and wasn't supposed to, you know, custody things, sure. maybe then we would be going, well, great job for, for stopping them. It, so I can understand both sides of this. I can understand her outrage. Yes. But yes, maybe there was there was a, a call to action for a, a something that matched both of their descriptions. You, that could be you just exactly. don't know. Yeah, that's a good call. I mean, we have something similar in our neighborhood where you know we've got we've got an area where people only residents are supposed to be, and it's one of those things where it's like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. If the security asks for people, are you residents? Do you live here? Most of them will say yes, I am. I'll show proof of ID. But others are so outraged that they're <laughs> even asked. It's like, well, look, it, it's for the betterment of the yeah. community. I mean, and I think you mentioned it for the safety of others. You just have to be willing to, to cooperate. And I get it. She probably feels tread on, and she's not that. She's not that person. And, and from my understanding from this story, that the child didn't necessarily look like uh, that they would be together. You know what I'm yes. saying? I mean, they had they made an assessment and that sort of thing. And then some people are coming out and saying, well, this is you know a, a racial thing. And uh, when it comes down to it, you know, it's a safety thing altogether. Yeah. And I know that there's there's a mindset with police officers. Okay, you, you're automatically on the defense, and there are great cops and there's bad cops, yeah. and how the cops handle it is all up to them. But they have to stay in control all the time, and so they get that, in my opinion, at least, they get the the uh, assumption, short the short instant, because they're like, mm -hmm. oh, they were being mean to me, but they're like, no, they're taking control of the situation. And if they go, come on, who is it? Come on, tell us. Yeah. They're not going to give the answer. Of course not. So they have to be firm. And this is only one side of the story. Yeah. I'd be curious to know what the pilot, because I believe it was the pilot who right. was the employee that was concerned that something was going. We don't know what her behavior was like on the plane, or the kid's behavior, or maybe the kid said something to a stranger just out of turn. You just don't know. 100%. So I feel like there's a lot of missing pieces to that story. And, and we'll kind of like wrap it up to let everyone know the pilot of a plane can kick anybody off the plane yeah. no matter what. Doesn't he, I don't like the way you look. He's a, that, Because he is looking for the safety. And granted, we don't yeah. think that happens, but they have that ability to do that. 100%. They should do that. Well, one of New York City's biggest developers has listed his Hamptons home for $38 million, but there is just one catch. If you buy it, you can't live in it. Right. The mansion lacks an official certif certificate of occupancy. Officials say they've refused to grant the title because the developer cleared land on the property and built additions without permits or permissions. Oh. He's been cited with 21 violations, which he's refused to pay. A Long Island real estate expert values the house between 12 and $15 million. The four bedroom home comes with a pool, sits on close to three acres. He originally paid around 10 million bucks for the home back in 2017. 17 before clearing grounds designated as wetlands and adding on without permits. Okay. So, so if him. you buy it for $38 million, you're probably looking at another two to five million just to clear up all the violations. And if you look at that picture too, you can see it was marshland. I mean, he got pretty yes. close out there. So, uh, and it sounds like it was done in just blatant disregard. Yeah. I'll pay the fines. I don't care. Well, now you're in a position where you're, how are you ever going to sell that? And the other the people that move in are also going to know, oh, you're on that house that destroyed the wetlands. Yeah. So whatever. <laughs> so you're not going to have neighbors that are going to be happy with you. But I would want somebody to actually live in a house instead of it being yeah, not occupied. New York is notoriously difficult, you know, when it comes to making changes to houses or development or construction, and especially out in Long Island, and especially in the Hamptons. Yeah. Good luck trying to put, you know, paint a fence out there because you'll, you know, wait five years before you're you approved. You are right, so, and that's no <laughs> far from the truth. A University of Maryland actually shutting down social activities and for sororities and fraternities after reports of unsafe activities. Officials announced that the suspension of all 21 fraternities and 16 sororities, the letter did not specifically mention hazing, but claimed that the groups were engaging in activities that threaten the safety and the well-being of the campus community. The investigation is focused on recent concerns involving initiation practices. Again, they're not mentioning hazing. Greek life is a major player in the University of Maryland social scene. About 16% of the school's 40,000 student body actually belongs to a fraternity or sorority. And some say it's almost like a, a, a way of a passage, if you will, that you're in a fraternity sure. and part of the college life as well. And to, for, for Maryland, to kind of go back to their air, airport story more or less, is that 
they want to make sure that they're looking out for everybody mm -hmm. and they have to have these rules and they're kind of just getting ahead of it before something does happen. They go, well, why didn't you do anything? Yeah, because it eventually will land on them like they'll be responsible. If, if something, God forbid, happens to a student there involved in some kind of initiation in a fraternity or sorority, then they could easily be sued, which has happened, you know, many, many times in the past, just in, you know, probably the last decade or so. Just going to have a boring time in school. No good <laughs> stories. I mean, didn't right? anybody see the biography yeah. Animal House? Animal Tell House. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's just how it goes. <laughs> right. And Dean Martin in control. He, Dean Martin oh, is the one that came down and yes. said, you know what, no more rules. You know Zero. That. I would I, I would have went with Zero point. Zero. <laughs> I wouldn't wait with old school would have been even cool. Old school, that's yeah, a good one. one. We got more flash coming up around the corner. Our great folks we're gonna be talking to from all over the country, so stick around. Well, welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. Our next guest, Mark Congdon, has a new book out. It's titled The Ideal Life, Seven Steps to Harness Your Stress, Discover Your Purpose, and Achieve Your Goals. Now, that sounds like the ideal life, right? The book's goal is actually to reveal the truth about human happiness. Welcome to the show, and uh, to uh, Mark. So glad to have you here. And uh, before we kicked off, uh, you've got some big news to share with us. You just found out. That's right. Yeah, just about 30 minutes ago, we found out that our new book, The Ideal Life, was uh, an Amazon number one bestseller. Hey! Congratulations! That is. Thank you very much. That's got to be a great feeling. Uh, and which is actually, it, it, it's. Probably because, you know, if you want this great life and great things happen, you got to kind of work on yourself and work through things. You actually ask your readers in your book actually to really confront the age old lie. I'll be happy if I can just get what I want. If I can, if I can become a bestseller, I'll be happy, right? Or whatever that is in life. How is that a falsehood? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, the ideal life is actually not about experiencing the perfect life. It's about understanding that when we achieve our goals, their power to unlock the dopamine that makes us feel good goes away. And so goal achievement is part of becoming a better version of ourselves as long as we have another goal in front of us. So we talk about setting an ideal goal, a master goal for our life that we can then use to pursue the shorter term ones. And when we do that, we are able to set up a sustainable dopamine reward system that can continue to serve us, not only as we achieve our goals, but as we continue to become more like the person that we wanna be after that achievement. Sustainable dopamine, uh, is that sounds like you're on an IV drip or something like that, but uh, <laughs> the, 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 the way for us to get that dopamine, or basically to feel happiness and everything, is, uh, is achieving those goals is what I'm getting from you. But how do we, without just having like a broad statement, I want to be happy at the end of my, you know, in my later years or whatever, how do we get to that point? Well, what's interesting is the way to get there is actually by stressing ourselves out. Okay, so great. cortisol and the chemical that makes us feel stressed is a critical part of our reward system too, just like dopamine is. The trick is to understanding how to get in that sweet spot of stress that motivates us to pursue our goals without burning ourselves out. And so the I Got This framework, which we talk about in our book, allows us to get into that sweet spot of deliberate practice okay. so that we can learn new skills, achieve our goals, but do so in a way that unlocks the chemicals that make us feel fulfilled and motivated. I, I love the concept behind this because it talks about our physiology and things that in our life, dopamine, stress, and that sort of thing, the cortisol as well that you speak of, it, it, which all of us as humans have. It's a matter of controlling it though, I would imagine too, because uh, everything that when, when we're going for a goal, we're putting more things upon us which leads to that stress how do we circumvent that or you know and still get the amount of, of stress that we need in order to be happy it's all about the control that you mentioned so steps five and six of our framework are all about identifying the things that we can control okay. that can influence the uncontrollable goals we're going after so in the framework we call that the objectives and tasks that we pursue but it's critical and the extent to which we can focus on the things that we can control versus put all of our attention on the uncontrollable outcomes we want, the more we can do that, the more joy we can experience in life. That makes more sense. But also when you tell somebody is like, look, just uh, you're not in control. Uh, how does that bring comfort sort of thing? It, it, do you just say, well, there's nothing I can do about it? Do you have that mental attitude? Because we want to be control of our life. We want to control ourselves so we can obtain these goals. But, you know, how do we go where we don't feel like we have any control at all? It, or is that even a fear? 
It's all about baby steps. So one challenge that people face when they are pursuing their goals or trying to deal with their mental health in general is to try to take it all on at once. Okay. And the trick is to not put too much pressure on yourself. So there's always something that we can control. Like we can think about our breathing and we can control okay. uh, you know, the pattern of that. And we can control the way that we're going to approach the next 60 seconds of our life. So when we're faced in a situation where we do feel completely out of control, there's always a way to bring it back to the moment and find one thing that you can focus on. And when you do that, you realize that un that unlocks a spillover effect that allows it to be a little bit easier to control the bigger things that are needed to pursue those bigger goals. What about environmental uh, situations? You know, um, they, they, they put a lot on you as far as stress goes, or, you know, I can't do this because I can't be an actor because I, I, I don't live in Hollywood. It might be a broad mm -hmm. statement or whatever, but how do you get around those sort of things and still not stress out or give up? Absolutely. There's a psychologist, Dr. Gabriel Ottingen, who talks about mental contrasting theory, and we incorporate that. We have an exercise you can do that we call a dose 180. The dose stands for the chemicals that it's impacting, dopamine, oxytocin, okay. serotonin, endorphins. And the 180 is the idea that, yeah, you have this positive visualization of what you want to achieve, but the environment doesn't always allow for that. So you start on one side thinking about the positive, but then on the other side, you think about what are all the challenges and the negatives I'm likely to face? How will the environment maybe restrict me from controlling what I can control? Okay. And then making a plan for those challenges. And the science shows that positive vis visualization works as long as you're also negatively visualizing the challenges you're likely to face in your environment and a plan to overcome those. Yeah, because and so we help people uh, think through that. Yeah, if you're ignorant to them and go, uh, I'll, I'll overcome them. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I'll overcome it. That then that it's going to come back and rear its head and then you've not prepared yourself for it, which brings that stress mm -hmm. and maybe the wrong kind of stress. I love what you're saying. I mean, it makes complete sense to uh, be able to start personally where you're at and thinking about those chemicals in your body to make you feel depressed or why you're not going uh, forward in, in, in your goals. The book is called, oh, excuse me, the best-selling book is called, uh, you can check it out, The Ideal Life. Uh, you can check out theideallife.com. There you, you'll get these ideas and more, and you lay them out pretty easily. Is that correct, Mark? Yeah, it's, again, you don't need to overthink it. It's a step-by-step -step system that really helps unlock the way that you can have a mindset to the other things in your life. And so, yeah, I'm really grateful for the impact that this book is already having, and I hope it helps anybody who takes a look. Well, it sounds like it's helping a lot. Uh, congratulations on, on your new status. Really good stuff. It's theideallife.com. We all want it. Now we know how to get it. Very simple. Take care of yourself. And remember, don't stress yourself out. But do stress yourself out. It makes sense if you read the book. More Flash after this. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. It's time for us to check in with Tony Toscano to find out what's coming out of Hollywood. It's straight to your screen. No matter what size, you're going to watch it on. With the latest, here's Tony. Thanks, Mitch. Streaming on HistoryChannel.com is Season 5 of The Food That Built America. The docuseries is hosted by Adam Richman. What's the recipe for food fame? Take a package designed for dog food. We're about to reinvent breakfast. And use it to wrap a tasty treat. Or turn a byproduct. The fellows found them in the bottom of the gobstopper machine. Into the main attraction. Or even combine crispy rice and fruitios in two. These are great. What do we call them? What do they look like? Pebbles. Each week, the series explores the history and innovation of America's favorite foods. Well, look, all I'll say is this. Whether it's soda or candy, or pasta or snack foods. Whatever the food you dig the most, we definitely have an episode on it. And I guarantee you, you don't know the whole story behind it. The Food That Built America offers an historical view of how certain foods came about and were developed for America's appetite. Again, The Food That Built America is streaming on HistoryChannel.com. It gets a B and is rated TVPG. Streaming on HallmarkChannel.com is the latest adaptation of Jane Austen's Sense and Sense. I think people keep coming back to Jane Austen. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I think she, um, she writes about people's, you know, interior lives. Game are different now than what was happening in people's hearts and minds. It was very much the same she was so perceptive in that writing 
And I think also she was one of the first novelists to put, you know, women's emotional interior lives front and center. And that's, uh, you know, that was groundbreaking to the point where... Again, Sense and Sensibility is available online at hallmarkchannel.com. It gets a B and is rated TVG. For The Daily Flash, I'm film critic Tony Toscano. Thank you, Tony, and welcome to your Daily Digits. Your first digit this week is a little happy $2 million. A home purchased by Bob Ross, Inc., not Bob Ross, in, the 19, in 1996 as a classroom by the sea. It was used by Ross certified instructors to teach his techniques and carry on his legacy. Well, the house is in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, and it's up for sale at just $2 million. Although we know Ross's estate ended up in court and was a nasty fight for many years, most likely Ross had nothing to do with the house. So if they try to sell you this happy little house, chances are he never even set foot in it. So buyer beware. Your next number today is 25. Now that's how many catchphrases Dwayne The Rock Johnson owns under an agreement with the WWE's parent company, TKO, of which he is a part of the board of directors now. Something that is unheard of in the world of the WWE is owning your name or your catchphrases. Well, The Rock has done it, securing over 25 of his catchphrases and names, including The Rock, Rocky Maivia, Team Corporate, Rock Nation, The Nation, Rudy Pooh, Candy A, Jabroni, If You Smell What The Rock's Cooking, The Samoan Sensation, The Blue Chipper, which I'd never heard him use before, The Brahma Bull, The People's Champ, The Great One, Know Your Roll and Shut Your Mouth, Team Bring It, The Rock Just Bring It, The People's Elbow, Rock Bottom, Finally, The Rock Has Come Back To, Insert City, It Doesn't Matter, and Blue Hell, The Millions and Millions of The Rock's Fans, Rock Rockpocalypse and Project Rock and the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. And again, this agreement is insane. It's never happened. Now that's a lot of catchphrases and he'll be using that on his other ventures. You're gonna see it slapped on a bunch of under, under Armour stuff. But I was wondering, guys, if we were to secure our catchphrases, of course, Andreas would be, be good everyone. Mitch is of course, we'll see you when you look at you. And for me, it's my bad. I didn't know this required pants. So <laughs> What do you think, Mitch? What, catch, what catchphrase well, do you, you want to lock up for yourself? Well, see, uh, yeah, with your pants thing and then Rudy Pooh just doesn't seem like they go. I can understand why The Rock would not want to associate you know, that with you and their pants thing. Uh, I mean, hey, look, it happens. Here's one. You ready? And, and get ready on the internet. And about, uh, so on and so forth. I think we hear that very often. So on and so forth. That's dope. That's <laughs> I'm dope. hearing James <laughs> laughing in my ear. Every, ten times a day, James will say that. We'll have more and so on and so forth after. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. We've got Matt Doolittle, yep. single for just maybe, what, yeah. 72 hours? Is getting that it? it? Getting there. Oh, Let's get there. Matt. Let's just get there. TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, TikTok. Hey, we all love Chick-fil-A here, right? Love me yes. some Chick-fil-A. I'm only hungry for Chick-fil-A on Sundays, though. I don't you know what it is. You and me both. What is it about the Sunday when Chick-fil-A sounds so good? Right. Uh, Maddie, you like the Chick-fil-A? Love Chick-fil-A. Do you have a favorite menu item that you love to order? I always just go with a number one, but I just soak it in that Chick-fil-A sauce. Okay. okay, Mitch, how about you? I have the breakfast little... They're nuggets, basically, and they put them on their uh, little tiny buns. I'm like, I'm real sick. That's the only real thing I really like. Okay, so there's a gal that just posted a video. She's a former Chick-fil-A worker. She says that there is one of the most underrated items on the menu that is the best ever, which everybody behind the scenes at Chick-fil-A talks about. First off, she says the grilled chicken club with honey roasted barbecue sauce is the bomb. Okay. That is definitely worth getting. But the egg white grill, she says, is the most underrated item on the Chick-fil-A menu. Yeah. It's a breakfast item. Okay, I was about to say. Yeah, egg white with chicken, and it comes on a, oh, it's like an egg McMuffin, but a Chick-fil-A version, okay. where it's got a, some chicken, it's got an egg white, some cheese, and the English muffins. Man, I'm getting hungry. She says that is the, by far, everybody at the restaurant says that's the best item on the menu. My son, uh, who is a police officer, he used to work at Chick-fil-A yes. and everything, and he has this thing where you go and you order uh, the chick, uh, <laughs> six pack it. of little chickens, Ask for three uh, pieces of uh, three bread. buns. They'll give you the buns, 
And then he makes sandwiches out of it, and he's like, yeah, I mean, they'll give you whatever you ask for. It. <laughs> you just got to pay for it and everything. So he, he goes through there all the time. That's what he orders. And he'll eat three of them right there in front of me. I'm she like, says, I have to do it. also eat the chicken minis with honey. She says, that's, that, that's what I want. Go. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I like, yeah. And uh, she says, the diet lemonade and the regular lemonade taste pretty much the same, but the regular lemonade is loaded with sugar. Yeah, and I have to tell him, I want a ice water with a little bit of lemonade in it because Ooh. because it, I, it's it too is. tart. It's As I got an order, I can't drink it. Yeah. So do that. But yeah. my, and my pleasure to pass these on to you. <laughs> my uh, pleasure. I, I, I love their customer service. Uh, it is true. Love yeah. them all. Well, a single mom has claimed Southwest Airlines accused her of child trafficking while she was traveling with her four-year-old son. Take a look. So what can we do for future? What are the steps that you could take? I don't know. Maybe step one, ask for my ticket, ask for my son's ticket, ask for my ID. Um, I don't know, do we, do we need to carry our birth certificates now? Is that a new thing that we need to do um, up until they're 16 years old or something? I mean, what is it that you can do instead of just, let me just call the TSA cop. So video footage shows the, the moment a 45-year-old mom, which you just saw there, was confronted by two police officers at the airport after they received a call from an airline employee. At first she thought the officers were joking, but then she became terrified when they continued to question her and ask for proof she was the child's mother. Now, the mother has called on the industry to introduce some proper protocol. She said Southwest Airlines has attempted to reach out to her, but she's waiting to... You guessed it. Talk to, talk a, to lawyer. a lawyer. Which, I mean, you know, and yeah. maybe that will find out some answers that might help us change yeah. it. Yeah. Children, of course, you know, they don't have an ID. And so when she was saying, well, let me look at the ticket, you can buy a ticket and I could say, this is my son with my same last name. That's yeah. one thing. But that is like one layer, I guess you could do. And that sort of thing. I don't know if I have a solution for this as well, other than, uh, you know, if, if your child has a passport, bring it along with you. That's the only thing I can really. Yeah, I mean, you got to feel for her. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, clearly completely. she's, you know, she, she was doing the right thing and she was put in a really difficult position. However, it's one of those things where you don't know the whole story because you're just hearing her one side. So the pilot must have seen something suspicious to say, hey, I'm a little concerned about the situation. Maybe there was a call that matched their description, you know, a That's be a on call. the lookout for. And it just so happened that they matched that description. Hey, who knows? But I can understand her frustration, but also it's a it's a matter of safety. She seemed like a very, um, you know, low uh, energy type of woman. I'm <laughs> certain that she talked to him nice and easily <laughs> saying, no, this is my child. Well, Absolutely. I, yes. I got a friend, uh, she's black, her husband's white. And their kid looks very African-American. But when her husband takes her, her daughter out, he gets pulled aside all the time by cops okay. and people. Really? and Because they're like, hey, and he, has to, he constantly has to pull out his phone and show pictures of them together. Oh. Okay, the right there. That, well, again, what does that prove? But, you know, that, 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 that is one thing. And that's similar to what's happening in this mm -hmm. case as well. Yeah. So you can kind of see. And, and, and again, if, if nothing was done and mm -hmm. this was a situation of child trafficking, think of what we, the yeah. outrage we would have then. So you see, see something, say something at least. More Flash after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. It's now tax season, and we're calling on the experts from H&R Block. We got Chief Tax Officer Kathy Pickering on how important changes that actually could mean more money into your pocket after filing your taxes. Check it out. So thanks so much for having me. The top tax tips that you need to know about this year are... First, the IRS has updated their tax brackets for inflation. And what that means is that people are seeing a little bit bigger refunds this year. The second thing is that there are new electric vehicle tax credits. For either new or used cars, you may be eligible for up to $7,500 to help with the purchase price of those cars. And then the third thing is that we're waiting to see what's going to happen with the expansion of the child tax credit. But for taxpayers, you don't need to wait. You can go ahead and file re your return now, and the IRS will make those adjustments automatically if you're eligible to receive more money. So you can go ahead and file right now. So the benefits of filing early are first, it locks your social security number at the IRS so no one else can file a false return with your information. Second, when you file early, then you get your refund faster, early in, early out. And then finally, it gives you more time to pay. If you find out that you owe a little bit of money, it gives you more time to figure out those options. So for side gig, gig workers, what the big news is this year is that the Form 1099-K, which is a way to report income to the IRS, 
has not gone into effect at the lower threshold. It was meant to be at $600. The payment platforms had to send you that information. The IRS has delayed that for one more year. And so if you make more than $20,000 on your payment platform, you'll get a 1099K. But otherwise, you have one more year to get ready for the changes. And in 2025, that threshold is going to be $5,000. So H&R Block has many ways to file from do-it-yourself online with our new AI tax expert assistant to uh, being able to work with a tax professional in person. So many ways to file. For more information, you can go to hrblock.com. See how a sweet treat is partnering with some real-life heroes. Nutella is giving back to firehouses throughout the U.S. I'm partnering with Nutella this pancake season for Stacks for Giving Back. I love Nutella, and it's perfect on pancakes. Once you've cooked a batch of pancakes, stack them up, spread Nutella on, and top with fresh raspberries. Delicious. Nominate your local firehouse at NutellaStacksForGivingBack.com for a chance to win a special Nutella pancake breakfast kit for their next pancake fundraiser. Each month, Williamson Medical Center in Franklin, Tennessee, celebrates their tiniest patients by organizing theme photo shoots for their newborns. Aww. It's a group effort, or labor of love, as they like to call it. <laughs> the event includes an OB nurse turned photographer and a local woman who creates adorable pint-sized outfits. Look at these Holy pictures. Holy, got roller skates. Pick that up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because of the unpredictable nature of childbirth, the team often doesn't know how many newborns they'll have each month or when photographer Christy Lloyd will be available. <laughs> because, of course, she's delivering yeah. these babies. After the photos were initially shared online, Janet Weedner, who crochets these special outfits, says she's been bombarded with requests to make the items available for purchase. As you can imagine, those are gorgeous. Isn't that cool? And, yeah, and, and, and made. So it's not like, you know, specially made for the yeah. child and that sort of thing. She needs to open up an Etsy shop or something and start selling those. Hundred great. percent. What a, what a great idea yeah. to do. And uh, it makes for the great. My baby picture, I look like a fat tomato. Like, in a, <laughs> I'm like, eh. I'm like, my head's all red. My, my. So I'd much rather, why don't you dress me up in something crocheted? Yeah, like, with the roller skates. With roller that skates, was super right? Cool. <laughs> Stay with us. We're back right after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. The excitement is building for Hollywood's biggest yeah. night, the 96th Academy Awards, are this weekend. So many categories out there, so we need a little help breaking down the races. And who better to help than this year's predictions than Emmy-winning film critic Jackson Murphy. He's welcoming them to the show right now. Hi, Jackson, Jackson, so glad to have you here. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm doing great. So thrilled to be on Daily Flash. This is exciting. We're happy to have you yes. here. By all means, excited to talk about uh, movies and such. Now, this is, I mean, you've not, you're not new to this. You've done this for quite some time. And, and forgive me, but you're a young guy. When did you start reviewing films and, like, uh, kind of realizing this is what I want to do? I started when I was seven years old, which oh. was January of 2006. I've been in this business for 18 years on TV, in print, radio, online, reviewing movies, analyzing awards season, and it's been so much fun. I won an Emmy in 2010 for my on-air reviews and member of the Critics' Choice Association. So uh, award season is always exciting, and yeah, I've been doing this a long time. Uh, we, we love that. Uh, you, you, you got on The Tonight Show, Jay Leno interviewed yeah. you. And, uh, I, I remember when, when you were getting this big press stuff. I was like, that's cool. You're following what you want to do. Now, I have to give you a hard time, okay? <laughs> Because okay. uh, Andrea and I both were on a show called The Daily Buzz, okay? We did it for 10 years, started in 2002. Mm -hmm. And um, we had where we talked about films, and Andrea, who's also uh, part of BAFTA. And, and, yep, film critics. Mm, we had a little segment. Guess what it was called? Lights, Camera, Jackson. It, it was called Lights, Camera, Jackson. <laughs> Because wow. our last name's Jackson. Jackson Yours yeah. is first. Here. What's going on? What's going on? I Do don't you see it? <laughs> so so we, we wanted to get, you know, it's great to see Lights yes. Camera Jackson back <laughs> and, and, and having you here to talk about it. Let's kick things off. Let's yeah. talk about best actor. Best picture. Be best picture, rather. That's how the best picture. Let's go right to the top. Your thoughts. 
My thoughts are it's got to be Oppenheimer. This is the front runner yeah. for sure after sweeping award season, Golden Globe, Critics' Choice, BAFTA, SAG Award Ensemble win. I thought a few months ago maybe Barbie had a shot, but the way things are going, it's not going to be Barbie. It is going to be Oppenheimer, though I would love my number one movie of the year, which I've, I've got a card for here, The Holdovers. I would oh, love to yes. see The Holdovers because this movie is incredible. It is my favorite, but the winner will be Oppenheimer. Okay. I, I love the holdovers. I'm with you, Jackson, but I also loved American fiction. That would be my, you know, my <laughs> other second favorite. What about best actor? Who's going to win this category? I think it's going to be Killian Murphy. So we got yeah. two Jackson, two Murphys. <laughs> <laughs> Gillian Murphy uh, for, for Oppenheimer. He's incredible in this, though I love Paul Giamatti in The Holdovers as well, and he had some momentum with Golden Globe and Critics' Choice win, but Killian getting that SAG win, getting that BAFTA win, and people um, watching Oppenheimer again and again throughout this award season, a movie that's eight months old, and uh, still getting a lot of love, and they want to give it, I think, to the guy who plays Oppenheimer in the movie Oppenheimer, so Killian Murphy will win the Academy Award on Sunday. All right, you got good money on that one. There we go. Best Actress category. Who do you think going to take the trophy home this is tough it's between emma stone and lily gladstone and i think lily gladstone yeah. will win for her performance in killers of the flower moon a film that some people got to see as early as last may when it debuted at the Cannes film festival uh it could be emma stone she just won best actress seven years ago for la la land but uh off of this sag win i think it's uh, lily to win on sunday for her role in the martin scorsese three and a half hour it was too long three <laughs> yeah, and a half hour movie it, it was a yeah. great film i agree three and a half hours and uh it, but it's but a it, commitment I, I think it's also yeah. an important film because yes. i didn't know anything about about this. I love being educated this way. There's a lot of things that happen in Oklahoma that you don't know a whole lot of, about. We got to talk but about- Leo was so showy. Leo was so showy. Yeah. Yes. That. Not a huge fan of that Leo performance. Glad that the five Best Actor nominees are who they are this year. Uh, you know, one of the most competitive categories, I think, is Best Supporting Actor and Actress. Let's talk about Best Supporting Actor. Who do you think will take this one? The guy who has swept all awards season, the guy on his third nomination who will finally win, Robert Downey Jr. Right. Nice to see him. He isn't uh, Tony Stark Iron Man, though he was incredible as Tony Stark. One of the most iconic performances of all time. This is a good performance here in Oppenheimer. I don't see a Ryan Gosling upset. That could have happened maybe earlier in the award season, but it's not going to happen. Downey Jr. was nominated for Tropic Thunder 15 years ago, <laughs> nominated for playing Charlie Chaplin, and he'll finally win Sunday. Oh, that'd be great. All right, let's change the chromosomes around. And how about the best <laughs> supporting actress? Dave Vine, Joy Randolph yes. is so good in the holdover. She should win and she will win, uh, which will be a great moment for her, for her career, for people who love this movie. She's just perfect every scene she's in. The interactions with Paul Giamatti, the other uh, actors involved in the movie, fantastic. Emily Blunt, I'm thrilled she's finally an Oscar nominee after all these years. I was on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno with her. The oh. first time I was on the show in February 2011, we were talking about uh, Nomeo and Juliet and the Adjustment Bureau. And, and gosh, she should be a five-time nominee and a one-time at least winner by now. Thrilled she's nominated, but this is not her year. It is Dave Biden and Joy Randolph. 100%. What about your pick for Best Director? Best Director, Christopher Nolan will I was, win. Yeah, her I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, and and interestingly, just three years ago, many people were upset at Christopher Nolan for saying, you got to go to the movies and see my movie Tenet, even though it was kind of dangerous to go to the movies in August and September oh, of 2020. Right. And now people love Christopher Nolan again, just three years later for this film Oppenheimer, his second best director nomination after Dunkirk, which is still my favorite film of his, and he will win on Sunday. All right, the animated picture. Mm -hmm. So usually, everybody, when I was younger, I was like, that was the one you kind of want to look for because you know cartoons, you know that sort of thing. <laughs> but it's a whole different game yeah. now. Best animated picture. Your thoughts, Jackson? This is an incredible group. Uh, one of my jobs for the last seven, eight years. I'm an animation reporter for AnimationScoop.com. I love animation. And I think The Boy and the Heron will win. Hayao Miyazaki will win his second Best Animated Feature Oscar after Spirited Away from 2002. But you could see Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse take this, though the previous Spider-Man animated movie won just five years ago. So I think that's going to be on a lot of Academy members' minds. My favorite of the group is Robot Dreams, a movie I love, a movie people will get to discover as it has uh, sneak preview screenings this week and officially opens in North America at the end of May. I don't know why Neon is waiting so long. It's an incredible film. I hope Robot Dreams wins, but I think it will be Hayao Miyazaki for The Boy and the Heron.
Jackson, we have about 30 seconds left with you. Let's talk quickly about snubs. Who do you think was yeah. the biggest snub this year? Supporting actor category, Glenn Howerton was unbelievable in Blackberry, a movie I hope people <gasps> continue to that movie. Cover. Yes. I, I, and Juliette Binoche in The Taste of Things. They put her up for supporting actors, though I, I would argue it's a lead role. She was really good, but so many strong performances did get nominated this year that, that I'm so glad that, that they're on the ballot and will be at the show on Sunday, which is going to be so much fun to watch. The show's an hour earlier this year. It's at 7 p.m. Eastern. So. That'll be exciting but for sure. But it'll still go on for five oh, hours. Warm, set, yeah. <laughs> Correct. It'll still go on forever. And it's yes. so great for people to have to get up really yeah. early like we do. So we actually appreciate that. Jackson, where can folks find out more about you and your shows and your, your reviews? Thank you. Twitter at LCJ Reviews, Instagram at Lights Cam Jackson. I'm on YouTube and the website is lights-camera-jackson.com. All right. Let's we have you back again. Him. Thank you so yes. much for your fix. Thank you, Jackson. More flash after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash. When the love of her life gets engaged to her friend, a woman puts her feelings aside to be the bridesmaid. But days before the wedding, she makes a spontaneous wish for true love, only to wake up as the bride-to-be. This is today's must-watch movie, Irish Wish. What brings you to Ireland? A wedding. Oh, congratulations. Oh, no, it's, it's not mine. <laughs> it's my friend's. I can't believe Paul and Emma are getting married. You balance me out, Madeline. We do make a great team. We do. Hi, Mom. I can't help but think that things would be different if I had told Paul how I felt. You're gonna have to start speaking up for yourself. It's too late now. I wish I was marrying Paul Kennedy. What the? I haven't seen him anywhere. <laughs> How did he get in there? What is wrong? I am not the one who's getting married. She is. <gasps> exactly. You, my friend, are marrying Paul Kennedy. Yes! Come on. Ah! Hello? It's you. How'd you get the ring on your finger? You got down on your knee and you proposed to me. I proposed? I mean, yes, of course, of course. Yes, I proposed. <laughs> My publicist said that we should get some PR pictures and some idyllic Irish backdrops. Mm. He thinks it'll help boost my sales figures. Oh, so not just a wedding, but a good PR event too. Yeah, exactly. If you're gonna spend the day with us tomorrow, can you leave your snark at home? I'll do my best. It's like a dream, although I'm not a Hey, you're pretty good. <laughs> I'd love to get married up here. Why don't you? I don't want to be difficult. I'd hardly call having a voice at your own wedding being difficult, would you? <laughs> is it everything you imagine? I know this might sound strange, but I'm not sure this is supposed to be my life. the time to speak up. That does it for Daily Flash. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye.